What do we got on the docket today? We got some music. All right, so I got to master this. So I'm just going to listen to it and see how it sounds. So it's a little dull. It's a little centered. There's some stuff going on in the low mids that I don't like. And I'm wishing like the mix would be more engaging and dynamic. So uh, let's start with just throwing. Let's get let's get the mix pumping a little bit. So that's way too much, obviously. Okay, oops. So this will help just get... I'm just trying to hear what, what it's doing to the mix right now. So what I'm doing now is I'm just way over compressing it to see how it's reacting to the music. So, so I'm just dialing it in so that the music is pumping a little bit more. And then we're just going to crush it and then take all that away at the end. <laughs> so this, having this attack, helps it reinforce that snare transient. So we don't want to kill that if... It, if if I'm mashing this song and the guy that sent it to me or the girl that sent it is a drummer, they're gonna they're gonna be mad if I killed the transient on that snare. So I like to keep a really loose attack. All right, I'm digging this right about here. So um, now let's let's listen and see if we can get a little bit more modern sounding uh eq space on this because it's kind of it's a little muddy it's a little collapsed in the middle so i'm gonna use this guy and then uh based on Bo Burchell's recommendation using the tilt at three decibel per octave kind of gives you a nice visual landscape of what to look look at here let me pull this down here so this, uh, let me show you what I meant. So the three dB per octave tilt, this thing, you have a pretty solid master, something that's in the right ballpark for a commercial project. It should be pretty flat across the top when you have that tilt set right. Um, so this just, this is a really easy way to to see if um, your ears are not lying to you. So first thing I like to do is is just kill anything, especially for like a rock mix, something that needs to be tight and pumpy. Uh, we gotta kill like the really deep stuff, the really deep subwoofer stuff. So I would say right around here is where it's sounding pretty good. So this is where the, the mud that I'm hearing right away is in this region. So let's go to the let's go to rockin' out part here. And then we'll loop it. And then I can dial in this EQ to kind of clean that up, make it bigger. Let's, let's find how we can make this mix really open up. So let's 
so the so there's a few things we can do here um we can take out both channels of, of this or we can focus on and leave this the information on the side alone uh so keep the guitars keep keep the 200 in the guitars to make them sound a little bit thicker and warmer which the style of music i think probably is what they're going for um so i'm going to change it to mid side mode and see if we just scoop that out of the out of the bass the only issue i'm concerned about is 200 hertz is where the snare bottom end lives so we got to be careful not to kill our snare so we have to listen to that really carefully when i scoop this out so let's try it All right, so I think if we go around 150-ish, we might be able to scoop some of this out. Yeah, the snare lives right right at 200 hertz. You can see it right here. So we want to try to avoid that if we can, because um, the snare is already not super punchy in this mix. So we want to try to maintain that. So let's see what happens if we dial this back a little bit in here. So I actually like like it right around here. And what what I'm gonna end up doing anyways is adding in more harm, like harmonic bass stuff later. So um, when that when that happens, that'll fill in um, that'll fill that what I'm taking out back in at least to some degree. So um, so let's go back and check this out. All right, so the top end needs needs a little bit of help. So. Um, what I really like using is this EQ. Uh, I don't know what it, it, something about how the band shape is, but it's awesome for just kind of lifting up the mix, uh, especially in a mastering sense. It doesn't really get super brittle, um, so I want to bring a little air into this. So that's sixteen between ten and sixteen. So we'll bounce around to find where a sweet spot is. So when we go to 12, the vocals start getting really bright. So we got to be careful about that. And then 10 starts making it, um, the vocals and the cymbals start getting harsh. So we got to, so this we're going to have to pursue with caution. But I think if we go all the way up here, we might be able to do it transparently enough where we can really bring out the air. All right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little bit of both. I'm going to also boost the top end using this EQ um, way, way out here. Because um, I, I like the presence that that 12K gives me. These frequencies are killing me. I'm just gonna go and scoop some of those out. Alright, so now we've brightened up the top end. It doesn't sound super brittle yet. Um, so what I, what I like to do... Let me see. Um... I'm gonna take take the EQ in and out, make sure I made a good choice. Hey guys, what's going on? Alright, so without so this is without the EQ and then I'm gonna punch this back and you'll hear how the whole mix opens up. Alright, 
cool. All right, I'm liking that so far. So the next thing um, I want to do is start giving this thing some uh, some volume. And also, I want to. I always like to put this Max Bass uh, plugin on on stuff when mastering um, if it needs it. This song might not need it. We'll find out when I put it on. Um, but this, what this does is this will bring some of the subharmonic or uh, the lower frequency bass information shifted up so that if you take this song uh, from like a club where you have a subwoofer or something to earbuds, you're going to be able to still hear bass or feel that there's bass present. Um, so I always like to put a little bit of this in there to kind just to make sure that it's going to sound good on everything. Cool. Okay. Um, something else I'd like to do as just like an insurance policy is uh, I really like using a linear multi-phase like, uh, compressor. And all I'm doing is just tapping any of the, the peaks that are jumping out and then pushing those down a little bit. So you can, you can see just visually what's going on. Something that's important though is to get the attack timings right for the low end, um, and then also the the top end. Uh, if you're not fast enough, you're gonna miss those really sharp, pokey transients in the top end. Uh, but you want to be a little bit slow in the low end to let let like the initial kick drum come through, uh, and then clamp down on it a little bit. So that kind of um, gives you more of a dynamic, almost like a more of a dynamic range there, where the kick drum punch comes through, and then all the bass gets push down so that there's there's space between the kick drum hits so this is important for like this like a slower rock or metal song like this where um the kick isn't going so fast that it can't the bass can't ever recover so this gives it a little bit more of a, a, a vibe and a flow so you probably can't even i don't know if you can even hear this But the bass, just all the low bass right now. And you know what? what I want to try something. I, I'm a huge advocate for timing the tempo of your songs to the attacks of stuff so that it, it pulses. So let's find out what the tempo is. All right, so it's a, it's about 85. So I actually made these little sheets. Um, delay timing sheet, look at that. So I can look up the tempo, which is 85. And then I, uh, so it's 88 milliseconds is for a 30 second note. So let's do half of that, which is 44. And then we'll do the release of, of a 30 second note. I'm assuming there, there's actually two bassists in this band, from what I understand. So I'm assuming they want a bass heavy mix. So I'm just going to let it be bass heavy. And then I'll let them tell me to turn that stuff down. This is uh, a magical little plugin that I love to use. Um, from what I understand, it takes. The, the sound wave and it approximates a bunch of stuff and it will emphasize the transients I guess or when it's digitized there's this the step and then uh, this approximates something to make it sound awesome I don't know they, they're very they're very cryptic in the what, how they describe what this does um, but I love this thing for just filling out the sound um, it, it also does something to the transients, and so I'll show you here in a sec. So 
So this is that's way overkill, right? We just want to fill in the sound. Okay. So so this adds a ton of volume and it does it in a pretty transparent way. It doesn't sound like it's compressed. It doesn't sound um like we're just clipping the tops off everything. So it adds a lot of vibe and saturation to the mix, which I like, especially when we have a song like this, which is uh, pretty harmonically dense with, um, um, with having two basses. We want to we want to get some of that upper frequency in there. Okay. Um, so at this point, we have. Uh, I'm just gonna start. I'm gonna I'd run a clipper over it to kind of take off any of these top end transients without duck in the mix and then I like to just bump it up with a limiter at the very end so um, slate oh, I usually hop to this one first um, usually sounds pretty good for most of the stuff I work on um, but I'll switch between this and some other clippers uh, depending on if this isn't cutting it so that's I'm just going to start by putting everything at basically straight up and down. And this, this is also really important, this constant gain monitoring. Uh, this will keep it so that you're not, um, you're not getting fooled by it sounding louder. Uh, you can actually hear how the signal is changing as you're bumping this up. So, so for instance, this, I'm going to keep pushing the volume up. The volume doesn't get louder. You just hear it getting more distorted. So then you can find the sweet spot. So way too much. This is this is rough. This is in a pretty good spot right here. So, so we're gonna disengage that. So there's some pumping going on that I can hear. So I think we got to come back here and dial this back. That actually might be more from the mix. Uh, so again, when people send you stuff, you know, you have to deal with what you have sometimes. So maybe they want it to be really pumpy there. Man, it's really. Let me. I'm gonna turn some of the stuff off and see if I can find out what is causing that. Yeah, it's definitely from the. It's from the bass. Yeah, so that's just from the mix. Um, there's not much I can do about that. So it's super pumpy. Um, I was concerned maybe I was hitting one of my compressors too hard, but... Um, so what I mean by pumpy... Um, I guess it's hard to explain, but the this music kind of sounds like anytime there's like something really heavy going on, like the basses are hitting, their low notes or the drums are hitting, the music sounds like it goes away and then comes back, it goes away and comes back. Um, so I'm I'm noticing that more as I make the music louder and louder and clear it up, it's more pumpy, um, which is not a bad thing if it's timed correctly, um, and it's you know it, you want that type of vibe like dance music usually does that. Um, but for something more rock like this, usually that's not ideal. Um, so I try to minimize that or make it not as obvious, but we'll see what the band thinks. This might be something totally intentional on their end. Uh, but they didn't mention that to me when they sent it over. Yeah, baby, my love is 
So I think we're getting, we're starting to get there. All the pieces are coming together now. Um, so some final little magic fairy dust we can add to this song would be, um, some people like to use spatializers or spatial enhancement. I'll show you what that does. Um, I don't like to use this too much because I think it really messes up like the image when you close your eyes and you're trying to see the band. Sometimes this can make it feel like the band is wrapping around your head. Um, but we'll see what it does. It may, maybe it's something we like because of the low-end frequencies on, in this. But um, basically, this is going to make the mix sound way wider. So let's take a listen. So this is this is without it. With it. But man, yeah, when it's widened like this, you can really hear the pumping. Sorry, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out. I just want to triple check to make sure it's not something on my end that's making it sound like that. Okay. I actually kind of like it on this mix, but I'm worried it's going to make the pumping too obvious. So, um, let's let's um. Let me see what I can do. There's really not a whole lot I can do. I guess there's one more thing that I want to try. I think I still think the sides can come up a little bit more. So to me, the mix sounds kind of uh, still a little bit on the narrow side. So we can turn the volume of just the sides up. And I'll, I'll be doing that in a second. I just want to check it in mono first. Okay, so it does need to come up, I think, come up a little bit. Um, you know, I think we can do that. I'm just going to do that right here. Um, so Waves has this. I just happen to have this because of the plugin bundle. It's this center plugin. It just has control for the side, the side information and then the center channel. Um, so I'm just going to ride this up until it sounds good, and then I'm going to dial it back a little bit. So always better to be on the safe side with mastering, I think. Something like that. That sounds cool. Um, and then I'm going to come back to this imager plugin. We might not need this anymore since we've raise the side up. Um, I'm just going to try to dial this back a little bit. It sounds way too big. Cool. All right, now we're on the home stretch. So I'm just going to push this up, finalize this limiter, and then we'll A-B it and see how much I ruined the song. <laughs> so, oh man, you know what? I think, I think maybe it might be too compressed. These symbols are starting to get out of control here. So I'm just going to look at a meter. I haven't looked at a meter yet. Hey, 
Okay. Yeah, we're we're around the right range. I, I wish we could get it a little bit louder, but I think the symbols are going to go crazy on us. Um, there's one more thing. I'm I'm not really. These symbols are kind of bothering me. Um, this is a magical plugin. I love this one. Uh, this is Soothe. Um, and it, I guess it uh it finds annoying resonance frequencies and selectively ducks them down kind of like a multiband compressor but i'll show you when i when i put it on solo mode or delta mode um what it's doing it's crazy but it almost it hones in on these sim on the symbols and it can pull down the really annoying frequencies that we hear so here you go So it also, it works really well in vocals. If there's like one sharp part in uh, in the vocal, it'll, it locks onto that without making all the other, all the other brightness and airiness of the vocal go away. Amazing. Um, let me find a spot so you can hear. Yeah. So... So there's a lot of gross stuff going on with that. So let's put this back in, and then I'll A-B it so you can hear what it does to the mix. And it, it just takes the edge off. It's it's really nice. You can go way, way too over the top of this, and then your mix will sound dull. But um, with a little bit of it there, man, it, oh, it sounds awesome. So this is, this is with it on. And without it. With it on. So especially when the cymbals are really being hit hard right here, this makes a huge difference. With because without it, it gets too loud, too bright. With it on, and then with it off. So you can hear it just just takes takes the annoyingness out of the mix. It's amazing. I love this plugin. Okay, let's get this finalized and out the door. So let me bump this up, and then we'll check it out. Um. I don't ever, this, this, whatever algorithm is using that, I don't like that at all. All around is good for nothing. Okay, there's something else I'm gonna do. I've decided this. Uh, I usually don't do this for rock, but I'm doing it. Doing it, man. Um, in mid side mode, uh, I'm actually going to cut out all of the low end side information. Hate it. Hate it from about one, one twenty and up, something like that. I'll move this around and dial it in. It just, it still sounds kind of muddy to me. And um, once you start getting around 120 hertz, it's hard to pinpoint your brain for whatever reason, the way that our brains have evolved. It's hard to pinpoint directionally where that frequency or lower is. So if you hear it on the right speaker, it sounds like it's coming from everywhere. Um, I mean, it gets it gets more omnidirectional as you go lower, but it usually starts around 120 hertz or 100 hertz. So um, I'm just gonna. So it really doesn't matter if it's on the sides at all. It's um, it's gonna sound like it's coming from the middle, um, and this will add this will clear up a little bit of space for those guitars and the side things uh, to really 
pop forward and give it a little bit more clarity. So right on here. Yeah, it's actually right around like 100. We'll just do 120. Just make it a nice round number. But this this is helping to give it a little bit of clarity and clean up the mix a little bit because I want it to be focused because the louder we make this, the more unfocused it gets. Um, I'm also going to make this release longer. Uh, so what we say, 85 beats per minute, something like that. 176 is kind of long. I'm going to probably dial this back by ear. There we go. Okay. I think it sounded pretty good. It's still a little sharp. I'm going to dial the... So, so this is what happens is you start pushing things up. You got to make adjustments because the louder it gets, the more the annoying stuff comes out. So we have to always dial it back. So I'm just rapidly going through, depending on what I hear. So I make a few fine tune, uh, fine tune this EQ, and then before I ruin it, and then uh, A B it to see wh where we're at. All right, cool. I think we're in a pretty good spot. So those symbols are still poking out a little bit. All right, cool. Now it's starting to sound good. All right. Here's the moment of truth. I'm just going to level match and then we're going to AB it and see if it sounds better. Okay, this is, I think this is sounding about the same level. So um, I'm just going to play it. And we'll be able to hear now the difference between what, it, now that everything's the same level, so we're not fooling ourselves into thinking that the louder one sounds better. Um, I'll just switch back and forth between the, um, the mix version and then what I did to finalize and master it. So we're going to be listening for clear, like enhancement to clarity. We're going to be listening for uh, the image, like how big does it sound? How 3D does it sound? Um, balance. So 
to make sure it didn't sound lopsided. And then, uh, so nothing's like pokey or sharp sounding or fatiguing to listen to. Um, and, and then, uh, if we've checked all those boxes then we did our job. So let's give it, let's give it a listen. See, see if I made the cut. So, um, when this is all gray, that means it's none that that's the original mix. And then when I click this and everything's blue, that's what I did to master the song. So we'll be able to switch back and forth, um, and know if, um, or, and then here in real time, uh, if the, if what I did made the song sound better. So here we go. So you can hear how muddy the unmix or the, the mixed version is. And then the master version is more focused and has a bigger sound stage. And I actually think we did a good job bringing out the some of the transients because um, they're totally missing from the mix. So there's no like punch from the kick drum. There's no really big punch from the snare. Um, so yeah, um, I think we're good to go. I'm just going to bounce this down for the client and then uh, get their their um, their notes on this. Because at this point. It's all just taste to me. Um, so if they're going for something that's a little bit more bass heavy or whatever, or a darker mix, that's I would never know that. So I'm gonna stop wasting time, get this sent to my client, and see what they think. So hopefully, uh, if you tuned in today, um, you got something from this. Uh, this is kind of like a dark art, it seems like, in the recording world. So. Um, I was glad I could come on and share this with everybody. So, um, yeah, I'll be coming on probably sometime next week again. Uh, probably more mixing or something. So, again, thank you guys so much for spending your morning with me. And uh, have a wonderful Sunday. Adios. With the best to beat and defeat the villain. My confidence is straight to the ceiling. So you can say that I'm